Welcome, welcome to Troggy Trogs. Let's play Dungeons and Dragons Online. And we're getting close to finishing up this chain. Now we've got one more action point, so I thought we'll see what we can spend it on. Oh, we got more pick arrows. I think we were trying to go for that, so that would be a good one again. Let's go ahead and do that. This one here too is getting you know highly skilled. Would be really nice to get. I'd like to max that one out because that's plus three to basically all the skills for only three action points. It's not a bad deal. Um, Morphic arrows. So we'll do that. And uh, I think this is considered a secondary toggle, or this is a primary. So we'll be able to have both of these running, I think. So we'll try it and see what happens. So let's move one more spot down here for that, and put that in there, and then we'll hit uh, close on the window. And let's see if we can target both or toggle both of these on. Yeah, so they're both running. Awesome. I think that's how it works. But again, there's like a 30 second delay uh, after you've toggled one on before it like turns off. So we'll give it some time, but. I think that'll work, and then we also are doing a little bit better on the plat. We're you know, about four thousand or so. We'll be able to uh, get ourselves a gem bag, and then we will have gems overflowing from bags, which are, you know, at least not too often. So that's good. Anyway, um, let's get it started. End game, Marguerite, catacombs on normal. As you shut the gate behind you. A great magical barrier rises up out of nowhere. There will be no going back. So I'll leave the death block off for now and we'll just see how it goes. Um, I don't think there's going to be any need for it quite yet, but we're going to need it eventually. But uh, these morphic arrows are going to be awesome. They're going to bypass the bludgeoning, piercing, slashing um, DRs, so pretty much we'll be hitting everything that, except for something like her, would be hard to hit because she's a wraith. <laughs> um, but like skeletons will take you know orange damage instead of yellow damage and stuff now, so that's cool. Your blood runs cold. Before you is the wraith of Marguerite Dryden. She watches you but does not attack. What's her CR again? Five. Oh. So, the race voice sounds jarringly close, as if she is speaking directly into your ear. You are my father's fool. I'm no one's fool. Nobody's fool. Nobody's fool. <laughs> uh, ha! Marguerite throws back her head and laughs wildly. Does she have a head? I mean, it's more like just, well, I guess she does, sort of, kind of. He's betrayed you, dullard. It's what he's best at. He'll destroy me, and the undead will kill you. That's why he opened the crypts. I thought you opened them. Then you know nothing! Marguerite's eyes flare. Um, they are basically flares, so it's kind of hard to tell if they are flaring. The only, only the Archbishop can lower the wards. But you control the undead. You wield the power of life then. Am I supposed to look? Uh... Yeah, I think that's right. Yes, at my father's behest, I found a secret power, Marguerite. Help, help me unlock it, Marguerite. We can do this together, Marguerite, father and daughter. Oh, okay, so she's just mocking what he's saying. He used me and he destroyed me. A crackling nimbus of sickly light encircles Marguerite's head, rippling her cloak with an invisible wind. Okay. Her eyes blaze. Is there an invisible wind? I don't know. No, not seeing it. I mean, I was invisible, right? <laughs> You're talking about the duality. He's known about the heresy since he was a child, but he was too much of a coward to seek it, seek it himself. Too pathetic to risk his career. Who would pay attention to the poor, mad Marguerite? She giggles suddenly. Now he doesn't know what to do with me. That's what I, why I must be destroyed. You don't have to die. Her voice softens. Of course I have to die. I'm a monster. After all I've done, give up the duality. Never return. 
My father will find me. He'll never stop. Never falter. He is like a golem, like a machine. He will find me. Go to your Uncle Renault. I'll deal with your father. Uncle Renault? He lives? Father told me he was dead. The leather stopped. Renault is alive, and he'll help you. You'll find him near the entrance to these catacombs. I, I was ready for death. I don't know how I can live with what I've done, but I'll try. But what about you? The undead won't hurt me, but they'll try to kill you and my father. He's a dead man, I promise you that. Marguerite nods. Then there's nothing for me here. You may leave, but you must purify the altar at the top of this shaft to open the secret way back to the catacombs from which you came. She fades away, and the glowing barrier blocking the level above vanishes as well. Alright, Kendra, now that my my first clicky of Expeditious Retreat's almost out. A barrier mm -hmm. above blocks your ascent. From the side tunnel comes the rattling. Hey, of orange numbers! Woo. Works on all the zombies, you know, they gives you slashing on them. It's great. This is this is what I've been waiting for. Yeah, good stuff, man. Morphic arrows for the win. Um, you know, you can attack them too if you like. Uh, now we can just get uh, improved precise shot, you know, so we can line everything up and just like have it kite after us and then line it up. Oh, oh, darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it. Okay, so the one thing I normally have when I do this quest is fireball. Because you can fireball these doors and they'll blow down. Usually, like the the level five like scorching bracers you can get from like uh, oh, what's the chain? Um, the, the not the chain, but it's, it's the low level raid. Your path at the top of the stairs. The groans of the living dead greet you. Um, okay, I'm just shooting and nothing's happening half the time here. Okay, uh, someone's shooting over there. There we are. Anyway, I was thinking about it's the uh, the low level raid, the very lowest level raid, uh, chronoscope. There are things in there that you can get called scorching bracers. It's like a level five item. They're bound to count, and it's basically three quick keys of fireball, or you can just you know have the spell fireball, or a wand of fireballs, or a scroll, or what have you. The fireball works really well. Meteor swarm can work, you know, but it obviously has a much higher level spell. There's no reason. To Use that, but yeah, I forgot all about that. Cause another barrier and the shrieking of ghouls on the prowl. And I don't know if like it's necessary, like it's considered a breakable or what. But like you can't even click these doors otherwise. But yeah, if you shoot fireballs at them, they will break. Maybe acid blast might work. I'm, I'm not sure, but I know fireballs work. Oh, I like being an archer right now. Chuggy Chog's really liking that. I'm actually starting to do some decent damage too now. Because of all the combinations of effects, you know, I get the two acid. Uh, it'd be nice if I got a longbow. Um, especially when it does more than like the, like there's a weapon bracket damage, like so like a longbow for example does 1d8 damage, a shortbow does 1d6, but then there's weapon damage outside the bracket. So, um, so if you look, okay, look at that for a second. See how in the bracket says 1d6 next to damage, like just say damage colon and in parentheses four to nine, and then a bracket of 1d6. Now. There are some weapons in the game, and this might be one of them. No. Or uh, maybe the Muckbane? No. I don't think we've seen one yet. Uh, no. Everything's basically just straight up base damage. But eventually, you'll, you'll we'll get some items that actually have uh, bracketed damage. Basically, it's weapon damage, where they have like a. It's like 1.5 W, they call it. Um, and it's. 1d6 times 1.5 is the damage that the weapon does instead of like 1 times 1d6, which is just 1d6. So uh, so then you start doing more damage. Like it's a dice roll that you basically... Imagine if you had a calculator, right, and you're playing D&D &D and the DM's like, alright, roll for damage. 
it's 1d6, and you roll it, oops, I almost fell off, and you roll the damage, and then you multiply it by a number that he tells you. So he'll say like 1.5, or 1.75, or 2, and that's basically what it is. It's basically, they made a few of the, the named items the in the game. Chambers lies ahead. The undead here are many and ravenous. So they made a few of the undead, uh, yeah, a few of the, sorry, a few of the weapons in the game. Mostly, mostly named weapons, um, and higher level weapon, weapons like Paragon. They have like categories like Air, uh, Epic, Paragon. You know, like I'm at heroic levels right now, but I think when you get like past like level 10 or something, it's called Paragon or something like that. But anyway, the point is, is that the weapon damage just start to go up. So instead of it being like 1d8, just straight up 1d8. You know, times one, it'd be like 1d8 times 1.25, or 1.5, or 2, or 2.5, or 3, you know, so that's something to be looking for when you when you find weapons in the game, because it may look like it's just a generic, you know, longbow, but then it may actually have a higher base damage, you know, a higher weapon damage. And then there are enhancements and feats and things like that, or at least enhancements that can uh, increase that as well, I think. And then there's also melee power, which is a new thing that they added, which I don't have right now, so I need to get some of that good stuff. If you look at my um, weapon power, it's just a zero. So I need to get my ranged weapon power, my melee weapon power up. Mainly ranged, but yeah, we need to do that too. All right, so we did all that, and then we got, so I don't know if those doors count as breakables or secret doors discovered. I don't think they do, but I know like when I run this quest, I always go for that. Anyway, it's not worth a ton of XP, but um, this quest wasn't as long as I thought it was going to be on on Elite. There's a, a few more mobs, I think, and of course they're tougher, so it takes a little while, a little bit longer to kill them. All right, so we got that done. We got to click the altar to purify it. As the altar explodes in a fury of holy energy, the back wall slides open to reveal a secret passage, perhaps a way out. You know what's cool about this is uh, we go through this door. Will be like a secret door in the public area, and there's this lever here, and you can pull this lever right, and then you can pull it again and close it. So if you're running with a group of people, you can kind of hide in here and you know mess around with them a little bit, and have some fun. Anyway, um, so the next quest is. We did end okay, so we've done Seek Dragon's Council. So this is Endgame, the Archbishop's Fate. Now we know he's a bad guy now, so um, that's gonna be the next quest. So thanks for watching and we'll pick this up in the next episode with the endgame uh, Archbishop's Fate.